Did you think already how it works the coffee calendar here in Brazil? Well, my guest today will explain you everything in details. Your podcast with a little bit of Brazilian coffee. Café. Harvesting can commence from the end of May onwards. The level of maturity changes with each variety of coffee. Ideally, a coffee tree should carry no more than 5% of green cherries. When it reaches that stage, harvesting can commence. The harvesting process takes about 90 days. Hello everyone, this is Kelly Stein again and this is Coffee, your podcast with a little bit of Brazilian coffee. I'm really happy with all your messages and suggestions. Thank you very much for sharing with your friends and your coffee co-workers. Most people are accessing the audios and the episodes via smartphone, but I would like to invite you to check my website too. Over there you can find all the information about the idea of having this podcast and also about me. I, I write about coffee for seven years. It's important to explain the dynamics of this podcast. Those episodes, they are not translation of each other. They are just exploring different subjects, so I don't repeat all the content. So if you speak both languages, great for you because you're going to have four episodes per month with great content related to coffee production here in Brazil. Now that I introduced myself properly, I hope to have your suggestions and comments on the website, not only on the social media. Yeah, okay? We got a deal! So today our conversation will clarify, explain what happens in the coffee farm during the whole year. That's why I invited Gustavo Guimarães. Welcome, Gustavo. Thank you very much, Kelly. It's a pleasure to have you. And before we start talking about the real deal, introduce yourself so people can understand your background. Well, first I want to thank you for inviting me here. I have to admit that I'm not very familiar with the podcast, but the little contact I have from the last couple of weeks, uh, I was really surprised and congratulations for this enterprise you're doing. Thank you very much. It's funny you say that because I'm facing some challenges because Brazilian public, they're not used to podcasts. But it's a matter of time. I think you're going to get there. So don't, don't worry. Yes. My name is Gustavo Guimarães. I'm an agronomist. I went to school here in Brazil on the Federal University of Lavras. Right after graduation, my first job was on the beer. I applied to that mostly because of the all the testings and to get approved. But once I was there, I, I knew that was not what I really wanted for my uh, professional life. So at that time, I had the opportunity to visit other countries and do some exchange programs in which we basically work a lot and have some contact either with the university or you know with the very hands-on labor on the farms. The idea of this program is to give experience for people that are in the agriculture activity to have the experience in different cultures and see how things are done in other countries. Where was that? First of all, I went to Germany, okay. all the way up north, close to the Baltic Sea. It was a big farm for a German dairy farm, beets, you know, sugar beets? Yes, yes, yes. And we call small grains, wheat, cevada, I think almost 1,000 hectares farm. It was a lot of work, but it was very rich experience for me because we had the opportunity to see how things are done there, the challenges and a lot of rocks to pick up, a lot of tractors to, to drive and plowing. So. Which was really hands-on. Really hands-on. A very good experience. From there on, I had another, some other experience, other kinds of exchange program, but always base it on the agriculture activities. So I went to Israel with dairy farms, and then I ended up on a, a program where Lavras, the University of Lavras, has a good relationship. And who listen to me now, the young fellows, I really would like to invite them to see how it works. It's, it's just go to the website for University of Minnesota and look for MAST, International Program, M-A-S-T. It's a very, very rich experience where we work work in farms. In my case, I went to a dairy farm close to Minnesota. And, and this mast was made in partnership with UFLA. Yeah, there is a indirect relation, okay. so you can apply by yourself, but you have to be graduated already Perfect. or just about to graduate. You know, it's not for who's starting school. I was close to Minneapolis, something like one hour and a half drive, and it was a very rich, rich experience. And then I had the opportunity to stay a quarter 
the university where we did some classes and so I'm very thankful for that and I really want to suggest young students to do so it's a it's a great nice. opportunity I'm not from the Cerrado region I'm here close to uh, Campinas I went to Cerrado to work with Bayer Crop Science I stay over there like with them for three years and after that I had the opportunity to work to a well-known coffee farm named Da Terra Atividades Rurais. We're, I'm very thankful to have that experience working with them. I stayed like 16 years. So now I'm working as a consultant and I decided to focus on two major activities. One is working on the farms with private farmers where they they come to me and they want to make their average coffee be, let's say, above 80 points and not have... Commodity ones. Yes. Low quality. Yeah, they want to step forward. And then there's another group of farmers that want to go for the contest. They want micro lots, you know, trying to. And we try to help with our experience and with good practices, controls and, and checking. That's basically what we do. And, and the other part is to help promote the region of Cerrado. Okay. So I'm working closer together to the F Coffee and Growers Federation to help promote a region. That's something that I'm really enthusiastic about. I believe very much in, in the region we are and our capacity to, to have good quality coffee. Brazil is expected to smash its coffee harvest record this year. The world's biggest producer is forecast to produce around 51 million bags. So let's uh, start from the basics. Yes. How does it start the coffee calendar here in Brazil? Let's say in January. No, no, not January. We should focus on the weather season. So oh, the agriculture. Like summer. Yes, winter. yes. So we start agriculture year through spring. Which month is that? That should start in September. Okay. okay. So we usually run our calendar starting in September and in August. It works like this. I'm not sure if everybody's aware, but a coffee tree, it's always simultaneously in two cycles one cycle is the vegetative part where it what does that mean it's the time the plant needs to grow the cells will divide to build new cells of growth okay. basically that's what it is roots, new branches new leaves new, new roots oh. get taller higher and let's say more leaves that's the moment to grow okay and then there's a second cycle that is the reproductive cycle so we have let's say 12 months of growth and then another 12 months of reproductive part what does it mean reproductive part it's the moment where the flower will come out and the flower of course will give you a bean and the bean has to go through uh, steps as smooth as possible that has a very close relation with quality and then end up with with the maturation and harvest that's the let's say our second cycle so if i will give you a picture of the ideal climate ideal situation on a coffee farm if we start with the first cycle in spring we need good rain and good heat that's the time the farmer has to put your nutrients in correct the acidity of the soil that's ideal life let's say that's okay. the moment where the growth is the biggest moment so, so let's say from september all the way to march that's spring and summer september let's say in some regions here in brazil the harvest just finished yeah, but that, we're talking the second cycle. Let's talk first, ah, okay. just the Sorry. first cycle. Yeah, okay. otherwise we're going to get confused here. Okay. So the first cycle is, let's take an example as a one single branch. It comes from the trunk and starts growing, growing. So yes. it has, let's say, six months, seven months of growth. And usually it will give us something around 11 to 12 knots. A knot is where the leaves come out. Okay. okay. At that exactly point. So for us in our region, a growth of 11, 12 knots, it's Very ideal. Very good. Very okay. good. Very good. But then after summer comes the autumn. In the autumn moment, that's... But wait, I'm lost. Sure. After spring, there is summer. Yeah. So do you consider spring and summer together? One, one group. Oh, okay. So let's start again. On the first cycle, let's say that in our situation in Brazil, we basically have two big seasons, the rainy and the dry season. Perfect, okay. The rain season, it's between spring and summer. That in Brazil starts in September and goes into to March, let's March. say, February, okay. March. Okay. And then we will have the dry season. That's April all the way to August. That's autumn and winter. So what's very specific for us, we have a wet and hot summer and a dry and cool winter. The ideal situation is when we start rainy season, and that's September to March, that's the moment 
where the plants need to have nutrition, needs to have a very balanced soil, so it will grow. That first cycle, this rain season, is very important to assure us of growth. When comes dry season uh, on the autumn, that's the moment the tree will go on dermation. It's gonna slow down the metabolism, it's gonna rest. So in the autumn and winter, from the first cycle, it's the moment where the plant will rest and save energy to wait for the next summer when the second cycle will start. So let's say we go through this resting moment. We're back to the rainy season again on the second cycle. Where the plants will come back and look for nutrition, water to develop again yes. new branches new leaves but that's the first cycle so this now we're in the second cycle the flower that will come out in 2017 let's say september october it's a consequence of a good growth of the summer of 2016. i see so this moment it's very crucial that we have a good amount of rain a good nutrition to have a powerful and unique flowering blooming through summer we need to put fertilizers all again but this moment we need that to go to the bean we need big heavy beans well structured and then we're gonna have the drought again and that's very important for the quality of the coffee so but during the drought in the second cycle yes. is harvest yes exactly okay. so that's why we need drought low humidity so this bean will slowly mature. We don't want to get speed up really fast. We want it to have a physiological uh, development very slow. So the flavors can be developed. Exactly. Okay. The slower, the better. So that's why okay. altitude has all to do with it. Uh, the higher you are, the slower is this process. Yes, this altitude thing depends on longitude too, right? Yes, exactly, where you are. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why is it important to be dry? To slow down the process and to have low uh, humidity on the air. So we have less problems with fungi and stuff and then we can dry on the patios or drum dryers we can say the first cycle is important for production for yields for growth in the second cycle it's important for the quality of the coffee but let's imagine a plant yeah that is older like I don't know, five years old. Both cycles happens at the same time, right? Actually, every single tree, when it starts producing, it's always have both cycles simultaneously. But you the consequence is one year it's producing a lot, another year not much. Yeah, exactly. And it's easy to understand. When the plant is very small, it's always growing and producing. So our yields are always growing, getting bigger, bigger, higher and higher. Until you reach three years old, for example. Not three. I would say around five crops. So the tree should be something around six to seven years old. So an adult plant is five years old. Five, five years old. Not five years, five crops. Because it's going to take two oh, years. Oh, that's true. It's going to take you two years and a half to start producing. An uh, adult tree that starts to have a stable production, let's say, it should be around six to seven years old. And then it's very easy to understand that if you have a big growth, let's say in 2016, you're going to have a lot of new branches. So you're going to produce a lot in 2017. But then in 2017, most of the energy, the nutrition goes to the beans. So the plant's not going to grow that much in 2017. So you're going to have a lower production on 2018. That's why we have a cycle that it's biennial. Even in Portuguese, some people will confuse and say, by annually yes. like twice a year it's not twice a year it's every two years so make it very clear about that that's why for example the agronomist came and start putting one tree right after the other making like a row so you're not going to produce coffee 360 degrees around the trunk because there's two parts of the tree are very close apart so you're going to produce only sideways if you do that you're not gonna exhaust your tree so much. So the difference between the year that you produce a lot and the year that you produce less, this delta is not so big. So some techniques the agronomist came to not have a big difference between the years with high yields and the years with low production. The idea of planting them closer apart is to have more trees per hectare you're going to produce less beans per tree but you're going to have much more trees per hectare so your yield is still I satisfactory see. and, and uh, you have a good yield too what about the pruning fertilization how, how is the order considering september which is this very the, good the beginning of spring kelly i would tell you that's not something that it's fixed already you know if you talk to different farmers they're going to have different opinions about that but one thing ESC proved already many years ago is 
the sooner you do the pruning, the higher the first yield after the pruning. That means if you do a pruning in August, you're gonna produce less than if you have done that in June, July. So there, I would say there's a tendency to prune your coffees fields earlier so for that you have to do of course the planning so you're gonna harvest those trees first and get the job done give time to the plants to to grow for the next season it's harvest time in brazil from now until september these coffee pickers will spend their days in the fields bagging up their bounty but the bounty isn't as fruitful as in recent years a drought during the rainy season has had a big effect on this year's crop. There wasn't enough water to keep the plants healthy, says farmer Diogo, and it's led to the loss of fruit. There's no way back. It's all shriveled and dry. There's nothing inside. It's not just a problem of damaged beans. This year's drought has had a financial impact too. Brazil accounts for a third of the world's coffee production, and these fields are full of Arabica coffee beans, which is the most popular bean, the price of which has doubled since late last year. While the focus is on this year's harvest, there are concerns about next year's too. A lack of water has stunted the growth of younger bushes. Farmers are worried that could mean smaller and fewer beans when it comes to harvesting next year. <laughs> So consider Brazil is huge, it's almost a continent, for sure this coffee calendar will change according to sure. the regional terroir. Yes. But let's say the Cerrado Mineiro, where mm -hmm. you are working nowadays, mm -hmm. what are the challenges? I would say that number one for us, the, the most challenging thing uh, part is the drought. In Cerrado region we have a very, very distinct season. We have basically six months of rain, very concentrated rain. When is that? That is starts in October, September, and we go down to February, March. And then it's the opposite. It's very dry from there on. That's very good on one point because we can have a very consistent system of, especially on the drying process, that help us a lot. The humidity at this time of the year is very low, around 30%. So that help us very much on the consistency of our coffee on the process of drying. But on the other hand, we have some lacks of small rain through summer. We call it in Portuguese veranico. And that usually happens in December and January. We have something like 10 to 15, sometimes 20 days with no rain. And that point, it's challenging because it's not drought enough to dehydrate the plant it's not that but it's enough to make metabolism slow down and that would not allow nutrition to go up and then we're gonna have a problem of the size of the beans and of course the amount of growth for the next year so that was very clear last year in 2016 where we had a good production but we had smaller beans so that's when irrigation comes to help us some regions in Cerrado it's a must you must irrigate but some regions we still need a complementary irrigation make sure on that lack of rain we, we can supply with water after the, the dry season uh, we have like four six four to five months with no rain so if we have a small amount of rain that won't be enough would not be enough to have a, a, a decent flowering so that moment's crucial for us to supply the fields with water so i would say that from the last 15 years it made a huge difference who had irrigation from who does not have irrigation because it's insurance you can put on your field and make sure your flowering is going to be very intense and very successful. What kind of uh, irrigation methods are more popular Common. in Cerrado? Yeah. I'll name two around pivots. A lot of people have, but it's drip. huge. Yeah. It's but a not many monster. not many lands allowed to have that because even people think we have a straight flat land that's not true most of our landscape is it's a gentle okay. it's a little bit steepy and not answer. flat 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 not flat, okay. flat and that's good otherwise your soil will be soaked I and see. coffee trees don't yes. want soaked soils the other system for sure the most popular one is dripping system and which uh, you can put the right amount of water at the right moment you can bring your nutrition together with the water. It's a well-known system for other cultures as well. So in Sahada, I would say the, the largest area is with dripping system. And what about plagues and diseases? For us in Sahado, the pest that it's most challenging is the leaf miner that attack the leaves 
and the leaf will fall on the ground prematurely and it always stops from the top part of the plant. You have to have a good management, keep as grassy as possible your field so you have more natural enemies and use less herbicide and try to mow more your grass. And now because of the Brazilian law we changed one of the products, pesticide that was used to control broca. Now it's, it's switching to another. Broca is the borer. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's been a problem for the last two years because of the change of the products that are allowed to use. I just came from your region for this harvest and yeah. I could see lots of this problem. Yeah, it's a new step because we got used to you to control it in such a way and that's going through a change. Yes, it's a transition time. Transition time, exactly. The coffee berry borer, otherwise known as La Broca, is a tiny beetle causing major damage. As young cherry matures, CBB is often waiting at the end of the bean. As the bean hardens, the beetle begins to drill into it, thereby claiming a large percentage of farmers' crops. We're seeing a weighted average of between 20 and 25 percent. It's only going to get worse if we don't start taking care of it now. This pest has been found in many other countries. However, it was only found in Hawaii in September of 2010. The coffee berry borer can cut productivity, require extra labor, and ultimately cost you money. With a multi-pronged approach, you can greatly reduce loss. Field sanitation, fungus, trapping, and worker education can minimize damage caused by the beetle. So talking about new solutions, new possibilities for the quality and production at the same time, I'm aware that uh, Cerrado Mineiro is investing a lot of efforts and money in scientific researches, and not only companies by itself or farms by itself, but in partnership with scientific institutions. Yes. So can you give me some examples of what is going on? Yeah, sure. What, what's happening now is a demand of the farmers itself when they get either by their associations or by their co-ops and they ask for the federation to have a project specific for quality. So I was involved myself this year with two specific regions, Araguari in São Gotardo, and it was a very good experience where together with Professor Borém, that's a well-known professor from the University of Lavras. He's really famous. He's really famous and really focused on, on quality. It was my pleasure to work with him. So we went to the field do a diagnosis of the situation and slowly we recommend some good practices. We're, we're focusing on using the equipment and the inputs the farm already have instead of uh, you know buying more things and putting more inputs in the farm. So it's like using the resources they have already in a smart way. Yeah. Very good. The idea is to understand each farm. It's like 15 farmers in one region and 23 on the other. We got to visit them understand their needs, understand the focus of their business, and then we can recommend a right practice for his situation. Perfect. That's so, interesting. For example, you know, we have to control the temperature of our drying process. Yes. And how can we do that on the patio? It's well known to say, well, you have to move the coffee 12 times a day, 13 times a day. So we came up with the a little thermometer so it's it's very educational when you give this thermometer to the farmer and tell him to hit the temperature of his coffee in his patio and when he hit there he most of the time gets surprised how hot it is and then i tell him well now take these beans out and see the temperatures of the beans that are tu touching under. the floor yeah they are not on contact with the sun okay. and then they're surprised how cold they are so it's very easy to explain them that we have basically two coffees on the be on the patio and not one with this little details and then of course he will buy one of those thermometers give to the, his tractor driver or his motorcycle driver the guy that runs his patio and it's a much easier way to check if he's flipping the coffee perfectly or not time uh, as many time as is necessary we put a a number for him and say this coffee should not go above 40 degrees Celsius. So it's very easy to check. Another thing that another example is what I call the wet tower technique. <laughs> Professor Boring always give us the instruction to put one bean after the other 
not side by side side by side thank you so we can stretch this coffee all on the patio but you're going to occupy more space right yeah that's what every farmer says so, oh that's gonna take too much space and yeah i'm not gonna have enough room and so but we explain to them is when you take a shower your tower gets wet how do you dry it? Stretch it, hanging in some place, or fold it? Everybody, well, of course it's stretch it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's the same idea with the beans. Oh. It's easy to, to... It dries faster then. Yes, and do you want your tower on the sun all the time? No. It's gonna get cracky. So at the same time, we ask them to spread really fast. As soon as it starts to dry off, you have to pilot it up. So with these kind of examples, it's very easy. The, the farmer absorbed that. And I was very impressed how this worked with these two groups we worked this year. We can give them orientations. And of course we have to check. So every lot has to be cupped and the farmer must know what the score is to see if we are moving forward or not as far as quality it's really interesting because you don't need to invest money for that no 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 that's that's the whole catch it's so the idea is uh, with little details we try to change of course some farmers already do that in a very consistent way and then of course we're gonna suggest something more sophisticated the next step is to separate the beans by size we suggest them to make as even as possible their lots for example i have a little screen i, I, I bring in my my car and I take some coffee from the patio and make it go through the screen and then I show him, see the difference? The differences of sizes. Yeah, and the size actually, it's not the matter. It's the maturation stage. The screen will, will sort by size, but when you look at the three parts you get, you can see easily they are in different maturation stages. That will make your process faster and more even. Even if the cup on the end is very similar, but you're gonna save, at least you're gonna save time on the patio. The very little ones that are poor on quality, you're gonna- you're Put gonna aside. Put aside, exactly. <laughs> curiosity related to this region, the experiments you're promoting over there? Well, there's one specific case. One of the farmers, São Gotado, got very enthusiastic about the project and he called me and said, Gustavo, come here, let me show you uh, some tests I've done and I already cupped it and we're going to the 86, 87. Uh, no, he I did it by himself or? Yeah. No, no, we, we gave them the instruction, uh, the general instruction, what they had to do, but this was a, on a small amount, okay? It's, it's only samples. It, in San Gotard is, is about 1,200 meters, so it's pretty cold over there. So he took me to the his office, and it was in plastic bags, these naturals. And he said, look at this, how the husk dehydrated, very beautiful. And, and when I touched the coffee, it, it looked like it came out of the fridge. And, and I said, gosh, do you have a place in your farm where you can storage your coffee in such condition? A, a warehouse? on this cold weather, it's very good to starch coffee on, on, on a cool uh, environment. And he said, yeah, I think I can do this. So this was the manager. So behind him was the owner of the farm. And he said, wow, I have the cooling chamber. It's, it's not used now, we can do that. I looked at him and you know, cooling chambers are very expensive. And he had that for a di different projects, for a different cultures not for coffee and he's not using it right now is it how good? big is it i think it's enough to to put something i would say 500 600 bags wow yeah so i looked at him and said are you sure you want to do that he said yeah why not is that good for coffee i said yeah that's good and <laughs> i'll tell you something i never heard about a farm that storage their coffee in that situation so you're gonna be the first one and please so he was proud and please spread that out if you actually get to do it. And of course, we had to check to see if there's no kind of smell or anything in that environment. But it's really cool and I hope it's going to work out to preserve their coffee, that they're doing a very good job over there. Well, now I'm curious <laughs> yeah. about the final result. Here are the things you will need in order to secure a visa to Brazil. Your passport with at least six months validity beyond the date you plan to leave Brazil your signed visa form delivery seat. This is basically the cover sheet to your application. You'll be prompted to print it out once you're done filling out your application online. And once printed, you must sign inside the box at the bottom of the sheet. Your passport, make sure it's signed, a standard two by two passport photo, and your flight itinerary showing travel into and out of Brazil. 
You'll also need proof of residency. Now this can be your state issued driver's license or ID, or you can also use a major utility bill like gas or power. Unfortunately, mobile bills and cable bills aren't going to be accepted. If someone abroad would like to come and visit Cerrado Mineiro, let's say, because it's where you work, when would be perfect for them to come and visit? Great question. I'm glad you asked that because it would be more than our pleasure to drive them around and show what we have. Of course, we have just to adjust datas and so. The best months are always June, July. That's our peak of the cherries. That's the time of the year where the beans are in the, the most mature points. Really nice people. I just came back from his region it's beautiful and I could see different profiles coffee producer profiles I could see the huge one with heavy machinery but I also could see the small ones doing beautiful work but in different situations it's really nice if you're interested to visit I will leave Gustavo's email and for their sure. information about the Federation Coffee, 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 coffee